Hey friends, Father Allen here. Good to see you. Welcome to Sipping on the Sabbath, our weekly look at the scripture readings for Sunday. It's the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Now, a few of you have asked me about my coffee maker, espresso maker, Breville, that I have behind me here, wondering if it's actually real and it works. So let me just answer that question by doing this. Oh yeah, it works. In fact, I think I'm gonna make myself a double espresso to get me through this little reflection. Showing you the big technique going on here. Here it comes. Patience is a virtue. And voila, caffeine. Okay, so today it's the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I've already said that. Uh, we're going to look at Mark's Gospel. We're going to look at the second reading and the first reading and even the Gospel Acclamation. So, banner day. So, Mark's Gospel. If you get your Bibles out here. Got my trusted little Bible here. We're going to go to Mark chapter 6, verse 6. The scripture says that Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. He had arrived in these towns... Only a few people would respond to his invitation, his call to conversion, his willingness to heal them, bring about a change in the life. And he was amazed. Maybe you and I can identify. Maybe we have members of our families, friends, relatives, co-workers who were raised in the faith but have abandoned the faith. Maybe ourselves too. We can identify times when our faith was, well, not as strong as it might be now. Times that we questioned, didn't believe, etc. So the Lord is amazed at their unbelief. And speak from experience, both personal experience and pastoral experience, oftentimes when our faith diminishes, it's because our faith in ourselves can increase. And so I become self reliant. I can do it, I can look after myself. You know, God, I can kind of put God up on the shelf for a period of time, go take a vacation from my spiritual life, etc. And I fall into this trap of believing that I'm good. I'm good. Maybe life is itself very good. I don't need to rely upon God. I'm God. This is false notion that, that we have what it takes to get through life and we can do it all on our own. But the Lord is very patient. The Lord is very kind about people like that, you and me. Thanks be to God. Uh, James and John, if you recall, in another part of the Gospels, this would be Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 54. They wanted to call down fire from heaven to consume towns like that. But the Lord said, no, you guys, you, you sons of thunder, that's the way you think. But myself, the Lord says, and even in today's gospel, again, Mark's gospel, he goes on to other towns and villages and continues to teach. Because the Lord knows. The Lord knows later on, there'll be an opportunity, there'll be an occasion to minister again. People will hear, they will respond. And I'll talk about that in a minute from uh, two particular books that I read on my recent week-long silent retreat. But in the meantime, do I recognize any self-reliance in myself? Any way I'm relying upon myself? This COVID-19 pandemic that we're going through, I've said before, not caused by God, but allowed by God. And I believe he's allowing it to wake us up to the reality of our need for him. To identify, to appreciate his generosity, the incredible gift of his love and his mercy. He's waiting for us to return to him, come back to him. So maybe if you are just coming back to the faith, praise God, welcome, glad to have you here. Uh, the Lord is definitely on the move. Do I recognize any way in my life in the last year and a half that the Lord has been awakening me to the need to repent of self-reliance? Want to do it on my own, thinking I'm good, I'm okay, this false notion of me being powerful when in reality I'm completely, totally powerless. Which brings us to the second reading of today, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, specifically verse 10. St. Paul says that when I am powerless, it is then that I am strong. I have adopted this as a personal motto in my own life. 
A number of years ago, I was brought to a place of discovery. The Lord in his goodness allowed me to realize just how completely, totally powerless I am over people and places and things in my life. And he gave me an opportunity through the assistance of others to recognize, to identify him in my life and to accept him as the Lord of my life and rely upon his power, not on my own. And when I live my life according to his power, rather than my power, life is much more manageable. It's when I try to control things, make things happen, push and shove my way through life, I end up being frustrated, anxious, worried, concerned, etc. One of the prayers that I say repeatedly during the course of the day is the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Might you also be inspired to say that prayer often? Grant me serenity. It's a gift to accept. Acceptance is the, the key. The things I cannot change. The people I cannot change. The places that I cannot change. And the, the, the humility, the, the open-mindedness, the willingness to accept that, and the courage to know the difference between that which I can do by God's grace, that which would God would have me set aside and say, let us not God's will for my life. God, what would you have me do? God, help me not take it away. Help me to get through it. And he does when I understand that I am completely, totally powerless over people, places and things. Have I accepted that? And a second part of the motto I have adopted. I always end my videos with this model, so you'll hear it at the end of, of today's little production here, is that victory is gained through surrender. That comes from Saint Jose Maria Scriva, who said that victory comes through surrender. Against the world, the flesh, and the devil, I will not win. I'm not strong enough. I'm not powerful enough. I'm not smart enough to outwit the devil. He is a very cunning, baffling, and powerful being, a creature who is always relentlessly trying to trip me up and lead me away from the Lord. So I surrender to the fact that I have no power and I accept God's power in my life. I wave the white flag, but who's standing behind me to defend me and to protect me is Jesus who has already won the victory. Satan is a loser. He is a defeated foe. He can offer me nothing. It is the Lord who offers me everything. So when I'm powerless, that is indeed when I am strong. And when I am living my life according to this victory, life is much more manageable. I went to confession a number of years ago to Father Lawrence Hyginus, one of the, my brother priests here in the Companions of the Cross, and he is the one that introduced me to this expression of St. Jose Maria Escriva, that victory is indeed gained through surrender, and I have not forgotten that word. He received that word, he passed it on to me, and now I pass it on to you. That's the, the generations of the, of the spiritual wisdom that keep on, keep on giving in the faith. So, the Lord is amazed at their unbelief. Paul says, when I'm powerless, it is that that's then that I am strong. And the prophet Ezekiel, this is the first reading of today's Mass, he hears the voice of the Lord, who says, I am sending you. Now we can make that personal in our life. The Lord is sending me. The Lord wants to send me out. And when I rely on his power, not my own, not my own creativity, charm, personality, good looks, which might all be very true, but I'm relying upon his power to send me where he would want me to go. And so am I willing to give the Lord permission today? Say, Lord, I'm willing to go where you want me to go. Send me out and send me to the people that you want me to encounter so I can convey to them the truth of how you, Jesus, have had an influence in my life. That we have accepted Jesus as our friend. And when I know that Jesus is my friend, everything changes. 
During my retreat of last week, I was at the Carmelite Monastery in St. Agatha, Ontario, which is just west of uh, Kitchener. I uh, took with me a number of books to read, and one of the books I took to read is this one called Hope for Judas. It's by Father Christoph Rembeck, a Jesuit from Berlin. Hope for Judas. I've not finished reading it, uh, but what I've read so far is quite intriguing. He, he puts the, the situation of, of Judas within the, the context of the teachings on mercy that Jesus gave. The parables, the encounters, woman at the well, Zacchaeus, the woman who was crippled, the three parables in Luke chapter 15. And he, he challenges us to consider the mercy of, of God. Maybe later I can give you a little more detailed breakdown uh, of the book. But for the, for the purpose of this reflection, I want to focus on what he talks about vis-a-vis -vis Luke chapter 15 and how the Lord is indeed on the move. God is on the move, and do I want to be part of God's movement? And he actually proposes, and it's just a proposal, that Luke chapter 15, the three parables, be changed in their order. The current order is the lost sheep, uh, the lost coin, and then the lost son. He proposes that the parable of the prodigal son come first, then the lost sheep, and then the lost coin. And this is his argument. God is on the move. God is calling his people back to him. And again, now that Ontario, the churches are open a little bit more, more people are allowed to come, I just invite you to be attentive to looking around and seeing who are some of the new people here. Who has God been calling? And to engage with these individuals as best we can in light of the current social limitations that we are still living under, but to see that as evidence that the Lord is indeed on the move, calling his people back to him. Likewise, if you notice that someone is not there, make inquiries as to how they're doing. So, the parable of the prodigal son, the father is watching down the laneway for the son to return, and the son does return. Now, what if the son didn't return? Would the father remain sitting on the porch, looking down the driveway, hoping for the day? No, he wouldn't. He would eventually get up, go down the driveway, and go in search of the son himself. That's the, 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 the premise, the, the thesis of Michael O'Brien's book, the, the Prodigal Father, The Return of the Prodigal Father. The father goes in search of the son. And then you have the according to Father Wembeck's order, the, the parable of the lost sheep. So the shepherd, the father, goes in search of the lost sheep because some people have left, but they have not yet come to their senses, as Scripture says. They have not yet made the decision to return. So the father goes out in search of the son. The, the Jesus goes out in search of those who are lost and finds them and brings them back to himself. What if that person, your friend, my friend, relative, friend, sister, brother, cousin, niece, uncle, whomever, is even so far lost, what does the Lord do then? Well, God, Jesus identifies God with a mother, a woman, who searches the house diligently until she finds that lost coin. And so God will search diligently until he finds that lost soul. In all three cases whether it's the prodigal son, the lost sheep, or the found coin, all three result in a party, a celebration that someone who was lost has come back. So God is on the move. And am I willing to be sent out as his agent in the world through my words and through my actions to assist him in bringing people back to himself? The Lord invites us to cooperate in that great work. Now, the second book I was reading on my retreat is by Catherine Doherty in the Footsteps of Loneliness. Again, very incarnational. And she talks about how the, the real pandemic in the world today is loneliness. And she recalls an experience she had on the subway in Montreal. 
Across from her was sitting a woman who said to her, you have a very nice face. Would you mind if I speak with you? And they struck up a conversation and they end up going the full length of the subway system back and forth two times, went to a coffee shop, became friends and remained correspondents until the day that this particular woman died. And the, the point that Catherine Doherty is making is that in people's loneliness, they are crying out for human contact and relationship. And so maybe, and I can identify in my own life recently, having two occasions where people, I was out working in the front lawn of my house, and two people came by and struck up a conversation with me. One person I knew, hadn't seen in a long time, another person, complete stranger. It was an occasion for me just to be available and present to them and minister to them in their loneliness. People are very, very lonely. And so just, just be attentive, be aware of how the Lord is calling his people back to himself and how you and I can be agents of the Lord's mercy, tenderness, attention, care to individuals in our culture today. Because this pandemic we've been going through is really, really affecting a lot, a lot of people in many different ways. So God's on the move. He was amazed at their unbelief, but he's very patient and kind. Paul says, when I'm powerless, that's when I'm strong. I'm powerless, I don't know, what am I supposed to say, what am I supposed to do? You're powerless. Rely upon God's power, his inspiration, and he will inspire us. And he is definitely on the move, and he is sending us. He is sending us out. And finally, there is the gospel acclamation of today. This is a quote from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. And the context is that Jesus is in the temple and the synagogue, and he is uh, proclaiming the word. It's a quote from Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. Good news to the poor, which is the gospel. The poor in spirit, the poor in material needs, the poor who are hungry, the poor who are poor and looking for an encounter, an experience, a communion with individuals, ultimately with God. Today, July the 4th, is also the feast day of my favorite saint, Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati. There's an icon behind me here. It's Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, 1901 until 1925, and a second-class relic of his as well. And he was referred to as the man of the Beatitudes, a man of action. Get up, go forward, do something, move. That is the Lord's admonition and encouragement to you and to me. And he was a man dedicated to the service of the poor. Many ways, unbeknownst to other people, quietly went about doing acts of charity, kindness, providing for, again, people's emotional, spiritual, physical needs to the detriment of his own needs. Very, very generous guy. And I can identify with how in our own life the Lord is calling us to be like that to others. Can you identify with that as well? And do you have the willingness to allow Jesus to use you in that way? I allow the Lord Jesus to use me in that way. What does all that mean? I'm not too sure. Every day is different. I'm just trying to be attentive to how the Lord wants to do that in my life. To whom is the Lord indeed sending us? And will I give the Lord permission to send me out this week to those to whom he wants me to minister in his name, of course, not in my own name. And when I know that I am powerless and I rely on his grace and I try to stay humble, then I am able to administer the true vaccine, the true vaccine of God's mercy and love that will indeed set people free because it set you and me free. So let us pray. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of this day, Lord. We just continue, Lord, to just revel and rejoice in the gift of your love and your mercy, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your incredible patience, your tolerance, your love, your mercy in our life, Jesus. Help us remember, Lord, that when we are powerless, that is when we are strong. 
we repent, Lord, of any ways in which we have tried to be powerful, any ways we've lived a life of self-reliance, want to make things happen, Lord. Help us, Lord, just to be people of serenity, courage, surrender, docility, humility, all of it, Lord. That's what we need, Jesus. And we give you permission, Jesus, to send us out. Send us out, Lord. Help us to encounter your people, the people, Lord, that need to hear about you, the people that need to experience this week some tenderness and care, compassion and love and attention. Give us, Lord, inspire us in us, Lord, the words and the actions that you would have us say and do. Mother Mary, St. Joseph, Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati, pray for us. Okay, well, there you go. Good to see you again. God bless your week. Remember that when we are powerless, that's when we're strong. And victory is indeed gained through surrender. Stay caffeinated. Bye-bye. <laughs>